Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. This is going to be a surprisingly short episode I'm afraid because I have no time to record right now. There's been a few changes in my shift at work and I'm literally just trying to record this so I have something to put out on the channel. I got my notebook out because I've been asked to get this out for a while now and I noticed that I had to deliver a devil to the well of the wolf. So I think this is going to be my main focus for today. I may see if I can do some trades or something. Like, what is actually in the bazaar? Gemstones for the mausoleum. Or crockery for the macabre counsellor. Now, he is literally the other end of the map. <laughs> Both of those are. Uh, three sets of nostalgic crockery. Do I actually have that? I do. You know what? For the sake. Do I have gemstones? I have some gemstones. I need five. God damn it. Okay, well, I guess I'll do this one. Crockery. And we will take three sets of crockery. Let's make sure that we have fuel. We do. Let's get a little bit more because I'm feeling a little bit dubious here. There we go. All right, so let's head off to the Well of the Wolf. I could do the, I could do the delivery first. It'll be fine. Let's go to the Well of the Wolf first. The Well of the Wolf is going to kick the crap out of my terror and stuff anyway, which is mildly annoying. But I think we will be fine. You never know. Maybe something interesting will happen on the way. Maybe we'll get some events or something. Everyone loves the events. Things go interesting. So currently, the whole world is having this massive like coronavirus outbreak thing. And... Um, yeah, here in England, we're a little bit panicked about it for some reason. Uh, there's a lot of people suddenly getting sick. And I had a sudden realisation today when I went to work and somebody said that they, uh, they had come back from one of the affected countries, you know, on holiday. And then the whole room just kind of went, Oh, I really hope you don't get sick. <laughs> so, on the proviso that I get sick, I may just vanish for a while while I get better. I don't know. It tends to be how it happens. I do get sick a lot. And I have only just recovered from my pre previous bout of illness. It's incredibly infuriating, especially when I lose money because I can't go to work. I, I feel like I let people down on YouTube because I'm not making the content that I want to make. It's all just very annoying, so I'd rather not get sick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here just eating loads of lemons or something. Well, oranges is probably better than lemons. Same, same family, different taste. And uh, oranges are good, right? Oranges, apples, grapes, vegetables, anything, I suppose. Anything and everything. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit here. I'm gonna eat all of it. And we're gonna turn into some sort of weird monster. That's usually... <laughs> oh god. But yes, hopefully. I, I don't know where like anyone who watches this. I don't know how the uh, this crazy outbreak is affecting the rest of the world. I imagine not well. I know some parts of the world are incredibly uh, screwed over right now. Iran, China, obviously. China is basically in martial law lockdown mode, which is very terrifying. I hope something like that doesn't happen over here. The biggest stress we have in this country is uh, the NHS probably wouldn't be able to handle uh, a sheer amount of people that would get sick. And all of that, if the business is closed down, we're in trouble. But, obviously, this is all speculation, and we have absolutely no idea if it's actually going to happen. It might just all blow over, and it's just fantastical news broadcasts, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for, to be honest. I'm hoping it's a little bit of that news over-exaggeration, because, let, let's face it, right? There's 53 million people in, in England, roughly, give or take a few hundred thousand, and 36 people across the entirety of the United Kingdom are currently infected. We're confirmed infected. It's a very, very small number. But obviously it's incredibly uh, contagious, and that's the worrying thing. Ah, here we are. We're coming up against the Well of the Wolf. You can tell because the light of the world is disappearing. There it is. Right, our terror is going to spike slightly, which is not great. Hopefully I pass this, the check to land the dam.
Okay. A hole in the sky, torrents of celestial mist pour into it. Shelves of black ice poke from its throat. One of the shelves extends over a well mouth in a narrow spur. At its end stands a pitted cast iron bandstand. Let's descend through the gale and land on the shelf of ice. 45% chance. Come on, please. Oh, God damn it. Crunch. The well wing drag insistently as you descend. You lurch forward and your driver curses. I have read this before, so I won't go through it all. Here we go. Deposit the abstemious devil. She shivers as she steps onto the ice and looks around at the bleak surrounds. Perfect, she whispers. She pays the remainder of her passage. Would you mind waiting a moment? There may be a further opportunity. You watch her trudge toward the caves. When she returns, frost in her black hair, she does indeed have a request. Long ago, the many-mouthed gave us all but one of his voices to his creations. I require a single live cloister bee. I have little of pecuniary value, but I do have this. She removes a book from her suitcase. It is titled The Choir in One and Other Martyrs of the Cause. As far as I am aware, this is the only copy outside of hell. To capture a cloister bee, you'll need to defeat a swarm. A flower field in the reach might also provide an opportunity. Okay, so we gained 250 sovereigns, so that was definitely worth it. I don't have a pen! Bugger, hang on. My pen is when it was in my little like case thing. Um, I'm gonna write down that I need a cloister bee. To continue this. Well of the wolf. See, writing things down makes my life so much easier. I can follow things. Uh, well of the wolf quest. Albion question mark. Yes, it was in Albion. I worked that bit out. Or oh, somebody told me. I think somebody told me in the comments section because I lovely people in the comments section tell me how to do things all the time. So we need a cloister. Bee. My pen is not functioning. Hang on. My pen is still not functioning. Hmm. Okay, maybe my pen has run out of ink. Oh, wait. wait, wait there's a little bit of life. A little bit of life. Okay, never mind. Um, someone remind me <laughs> to write that down. I have ink somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Uh, it sure as hell isn't where I thought it was going to be. Right, okay. Well, that was a huge waste of time. Uh, well, I will take that opportunity and I will try and find her a bee. Uh, what is it with the bees and devils? Aren't they supposedly bees at some point? I remember this as something. Uh, let's leave. Right, we need to slam it in reverse because last time I did this it went horribly wrong. Out, 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 thing. Ow. Right, I think we're okay. Oh. Okay, that wasn't that bad. Now, as far as I know, there are no bees in Albion, which is kind of annoying, which means we are going to have to go back to the bridge. Which, rather not. But I think we'll take the scenic route to the most serene mausoleum, since we didn't take that much terror damage, and I'm pretty sure they sell fuel and supplies here. So let's take the scenic route, let's uncover a little bit more of Albi and see if we can find anything interesting. But at least I have succeeded in doing one thing in this video. I do have about mm, 10 minutes or so before I have to <laughs> scoot off and do something, which is incredibly irritating. I like to do longer videos with more interesting content, so I do apologize profusely. I just didn't want to not have a video because I, when I was sick before, one of the few videos that suffered was my Summer Skies videos. And I do enjoy playing this game. It's kind of a, a meditative state, a zen-like experience when I'm in this game, which is bizarre because it's terrifying and full of horrors. But it's like Fallen London. I just kind of I dissolve into the world and very much like it. Now, apparently, there's a new map coming to Fallen London, and I am very excited about it. I've seen screenshots on the Fail Better Twitter page, 
And it's like a 3D isometric map thing. It looks amazing, and I really want to get in on it. But uh, it's the 4th of March, I think it's coming out, so not from the date I am recording this. Not to... No, so it's tomorrow. And when this comes out. Because I'm literally recording this the day before it comes out. <laughs> Planning. It was one of those things where I was like, right, I know things are changing. I should probably do this. And then I didn't. Because... I, I try. I, the Saturday came around, I was like, right, I need to record something. So I've recorded my Fallen London video, so that is a thing that's definitely going to happen. I recorded my Stone Shard video, which is yesterday's video, and if you are interested in that, please check it out, because I adore that game, and I really want to play more of it. It's like a hardcore, turn-based thing, and I thought I was going to be really bad at it, but I managed to do it first time, or like, did I die? Did I die? I don't think I died, I think I did it first time. I hope I did, otherwise I'm going to look like an idiot now. Yeah, either way. I beat the prologue, like, first time, and I was really happy with myself, because I had read and things online that it was really difficult. But it kind of fit in with the kind of games that I like to play, like Cataclysm DDA, that's a turn-based sort of roguelike, or roguelite, I don't know which is the right term, please internet don't shout at me. Um, when you move, they move, sort of thing. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to doing the open world elements of the playthrough. Ooh, hello, unsettled dreams. At night, your sleep is peppered with uncomfortable dreams. You dream of falling. It's a common dream here. The fogs, the bedevil, the high wilderness are thick about you. And through them, below you, you see something stir. A beast, a behemoth. Almost a dragon, almost a whale, almost a continent. It gnaws on the roots of heaven, and all the fogs of the wilderness are its steaming breath. Its moor opens wide as the gulf between stars. You wake. So, Let's roll the dice on Seeking Company. Conversation, tea, and perhaps a biscuit. Those fundamental human things that help us forget numerous moments like this. Hey, we succeeded. That terror has fallen. You find someone in the galley. They couldn't sleep either. You exchange a bleary greeting, a stiff pot of tea, and a conversation about the overflow valves. Already, your dream seems distant and silly. There's a thing up here. Let's go check that out quickly. I thought it was this. No, it's this. <laughs> Skylarks, maybe? The Enterprise of Albion does not rest. Its skies are littered with abandoned construction, derelict factories from its earliest foundation, homes that have yet to be lived in, workshops for industries that proved irrelevant in the heavens. Let's search for something of value. You begin a thorough exploration. A lamp in one hand, a pistol in the other. Cups and saucers, bowls and plates, and a butter dish, the venerable butter dish. You discover a house where the cupboards are full of crockery. Every cup, saucer, and jug bearing Her Majesty's unforgiving profile. Florid text around the edge commemorates the date that London first arrived in the sky. Oh. I guess that offsets one of the things that I'm trading in, I guess. Sounds awfully wonderful. I do not own a set of, like, China cups. I believe my parents do, but I myself do not. Not really my style. I don't drink tea. Or coffee. I'm not really a man. It's very un-British of me, and I, I have been thinking about just starting to try and drink some different types of tea. I'd like to fit in with the, the stereotypical British man on the internet. But uh, I don't know where to start. You know, the world of tea, there are so many different types of tea, and I just don't know what ones I might like. I've tried standard, like, Yorkshire tea. Didn't like that very much. That's, a, that's like a builder's brew northern drink. And... Um, my parents swear by it. They say it's the nicest tea out there, and they may be correct. I am probably just ill-educated. Please, Cantankery, do not get in the way. I do not want to fight you. Well, he did. Uh, what can we get from this? Listen to a last complaint. Sky Story and here tells of the Cantankery. Let's get some free supplies. Canning equipment. 
It's all buzz, shell hammers pound, vices squeeze. Once the parts are separated, your cook is able to scoop rich jelly from beneath the carapace and soften a tangle of corded muscles in the tenderizer. It's enough to fill several large cans. You know, that sounds disgusting, I've read that. Let's not fly into the goddamn... This thing almost kicked the crap out of me last time I came here. I can't remember what it's called. It's, the well of, it's, it's a well of something. I don't know what. What's this down here? Oh, is it, oh it's the start of the... Um, graveyard. That's the word I'm after. Graveyard. Mist gather soft as El Ida down. Oh, there's another thing down here. I'm, I'm going to make the most out of this. I have, you know, a couple of minutes. I might as well try and fill as much as possible. These th this was nasty last time I did this, wasn't it? Was it? That was a sky story. Yeah, it gave me terror. Yeah, carved with curses. Maybe I should stay away from those things. Now, I heard shots fired over here, which is a little bit terrifying, maybe? Now I hear missiles, which is considerably more terrifying. It must be the reclaimers, or whatever they're called, those body snatchers of the night. I think I'm flying towards them, but the, the, the mausoleum is right here, so I might just nip in here and not have to worry about it. Aha! The fortunate navigator frowns. Promise me, if I die, you won't bring me here. Take me to the Empyrean. What do they do differently in the Empyrean? Something theme seems different here about the graphics or something, but I think I'm just going nuts. Right, attend a funeral. Now, I've been told that I should have attended the Faceless's funeral last time, but never mind. Let's attend a Skyfarer's funeral. The priests welcome other travellers to share their stories from afar. The funeral is a mix of gentle sobbing and clutching handkerchiefs in excitement at stories from the depths of the high wilderness. You play your part, ensuring that a fellow traveller's life is remembered, instead of being lost to the winds far from home. So let's have a go. And investigating the Chamberlain's disappearance, because I failed this last time. We have an 81% chance to succeed. Surely, 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 this has to happen. Actually, before I do anything else, let's quickly just sell the stuff here. 330, really. Oh, we do get an invitation to Perdurance, and we need that for another quest revolving around this place, if I remember correctly. The, uh, Baroness, was it? Something like that? Back to, back to the name. Quick run. <laughs> Sprint back. Okay, let's investigate the Chamberlain's disappearance. Let's see if we can shoehorn this in. This depends whether this video is going to be slightly longer than it should be. But we succeeded. The deathless frown on any discussion of the matter among their servants. But you managed to befriend a group of footmen over a game of cards. It's an issue that's been gnawing at them. With the Chamberlain gone, no one has seniority of the sepulchre. And no one has permission to correct the clocks that go wrong. When I last saw him, he was descending into the deepest vault, as one of the footmen laying down a king and queen of hearts. We're not meant to go down there, so I thought it was odd, but I'm hardly going to stop him, am I? You have learned that the dismal chamberlain was last seen descending into the vaults beneath the most serene mausoleum. You can follow him from the nave. Hmm, I really can't, ah, I want to carry on, damn it. Ah, gah, gah, this is annoying. Let's contemplate the dead sun over here as well. Five tower, but one vision of the heavens. Vision of the heavens is really good. Um, I'm worried that if I do this, it's going to lock me in. And I really don't have time to do it. I apologise profusely, but on the plus side, it does mean if... Well, the next episode is going to be this, I guess. Unless it's really short, then I'm going to feel like a moron. But if it's slightly long and it's going to take me like 10 minutes, then it's, it's, I don't have time, I'm afraid. So I guess I will end the episode here. I'm really sorry about it being a short episode. I don't like doing videos this short. It's not really my kind of thing. 
I like long play videos, at least half an hour, but 20 minutes isn't too bad, and we did do a trade, and we did do Deliver the Devil to the Well of the Wolf, so it's not completely nothing. So, please like, subscribe, let me know what you think, your comments are greatly appreciated, and as always, I'll see you next time.